been doing this forever. I enjoy what I do. I like talking to people, I like dealing with people. I truly do believe it's still a great profession. I like the challenge of running my own business. I don't think it's a dying breed. Long before the days of health insurance and chain stores, the only place where customers could purchase their medical needs and other supplies were the local mom and pop pharmacies. But in today's world, with obstacles such as the internet and the never ending amount of chain stores, how does the mom and pop pharmacy get by? I uh, survived. Um, you know, retail pharmacy, um, especially for independents, is, a, is a, a business that is in jeopardy. The numbers have decreased dramatically. When I bought this pharmacy, there was approximately 15 stores in the three surrounding towns. I believe there's only about three or four left right now. Unfortunately, the small mom and pop store, the guy that um, relied solely on prescription profits, is no longer around. The business has changed dramatically since I've taken over in the sense that when I first took over, only a small percentage of people had health insurance and insurance cards. Now 98 to 100 percent of the people have them, at least 98. In the beginning, about 90 percent of patients paid cash for their prescription drugs. And slowly, state governments starting to pay for the poor, help people pay for their medicine who don't earn enough money to be able to afford it. And that was the start of insurance companies and states getting involved. What's attacked the mom and pop stores is the, uh, is the insurance plans. And that's changed the business dramatically because with those insurance plans and those insurance cards, the amount of profit that we've realized has been uh, dramatically cut back and continues to be cut back almost yearly. The insurance companies have squeezed our margins to the point where it's really not profitable to fill prescriptions any longer. The other aspect of the insurance company is they started setting the prices of what the pharmacists would get reimbursed for the drug. The federal government did their own study and showed that the reimbursement to the pharmacist for generics on average would be 36 percent below what the pharmacist's actual costs are. So nobody can stay in business selling a product at 36 percent lower than your cost. When you go to a pharmacy, you get a product, but actually you're getting more than just a product, you're getting what we call pharmaceutical care. So there's a lot of professional services that pharmacists provide, which takes their time. And this time they should get paid for. But the insurance companies were only reimbursing them for a product, and the fees on top of those were so small, two or three dollars for a hundred and fifty dollar prescription, that the really margin of profits dropped dramatically. The insurance companies are, um, you know, they just don't pay enough, nor do they pay quickly enough. Healthcare is going to cost everybody less money, but it hasn't. All it's done really is shifted the profitability from the providers to the insurance companies and the drug companies. The pharmacists were used to getting paid by the state of New Jersey every two weeks. When companies started paying, it went 60 to 90 days before they got their money. And they had to pay the wholesaler and had to go to the banks and borrow money. And some actually went out of business because the flow of cash to the pharmacy practically dried up. The only stores that are still around, if you, if you take notice, are the stores who rely less on prescription profits and more on the profits you know, on the front end of the store. We sell balloons, deliver balloons, we sell fragrances, uh, vitamins, we deliver, we have charge accounts, we do special orders, we have services that are a little bit uh, not on the norm, we pierce ears. The cards, the gifts, in this case we do sell liquor which uh, in case anybody is interested in wondering why a pharmacy sells liquor, it goes back to prohibition when liquor was outlawed for everybody other than the pharmacist, because in those days we needed it for compounding prescriptions. So we've kind of kept this liquor license for the past, you know, 70 years. With all those services that we offer, the word gets out and uh, word of mouth is our best way of advertising and we've been able to keep a, a vibrant business. The CVS a block and a half away. They face a lot of the same challenges that we do. Not just the independents, but also chain pharmacies, the Walgreens and CVS, have had decreased cash flow and decreased income. They don't make money selling prescription drugs either. The prescription insurance plans continually cut, 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 where we're unable to sustain those losses, unlike a chain store that has 
investors and uh, they have, you know, they sell milk, dairy goods, automotive supplies, you know, other things that we just don't have the square footage to sell. We're 6,000 square feet. On average, they're 12 to 15,000 square feet because they're reliant on non-prescription sales also. Now they have a little more capacity to handle it since they have a large business out front and they're bigger corporations. I think because CVS is a little bit bigger and a little bit more powerful, they can probably work out better deals with some of the vendors. I know for a fact Hallmark cards, we sell Hallmark cards, but the cards that we don't sell at the end of the season, we cannot return for credit. We pack them up, we save them for next year. CVS is capable of sending back for credit what they don't use. I don't look at them as the, uh, the enemy. You gotta remember, most people have an insurance plan and they pay the same copay irregardless of what pharmacy they go to. It's the same dollar amount is paid at any store. That's kept us alive. So, uh, you know, they can still come to this independent pharmacy and pay the same dollar amount under their insurance plan here that they would at a, at a large chain store or even a, a superstore. I think that's a major advantage for the independent pharmacist as opposed to the chain store pharmacist. The independents do offer a lot more in service. There's usually a lack of help where we ha always have an abundance of help. Home delivery of prescriptions, very few if any chains do that. Their own credit card type um, function where there's a, a built-in interest penalty where we don't do that. Nothing against the pharmacists who work for chain stores, but very often they rotate. Somebody can go in this month and have a prescription filled by one pharmacist, go back the following month, and that pharmacist will no longer be there. So that's one of the advantages we have is that you'll always find the same pharmacist there and very often he's the owner of the store. It takes a little bit more pride and a little bit more caring goes into it and he takes better care of the customer. When I go into some place like uh, CVS, like for my daughter, they really don't care. I feel they don't care about you. It's very impersonal and, uh, and that's why I don't go. They're not, just, uh, they're not just customers, they're not just patients, they're friends. Our connection with the customers is prime in the independent pharmacist. The pharmacist is the most accessible healthcare professional. We, we've now been serving four generations of, of customers. People recognize people, know their names, um, and, and just uh, give them a warm, a warm home feeling. You, know? you can walk in and talk to the pharmacist about your medication. They will be happy to answer questions for you. With service and appreciation, the mom and pop pharmacy has been able to survive despite the growing threat of health insurance and the expansion of chain pharmacies. But the question still remains, will the mom and pop pharmacies be able to continue on this trend? Independent pharmacy is, uh, is in jeopardy, but it, it, it seems like it might be coming back. It's still a great business and you can still make money if you're willing to work. The number of independents within the last 18 months has actually increased slightly. You can go into research and development, you can go into uh, sales with pharmaceutical uh, companies, but I, I truly still love the yeah, retail end of it, you know, being able to speak to the people, you know, yeah. being part of the community. It's a, it's a great feeling to um, be welcomed in a community and have them appreciate everything that you do. So, I mean, I, I love the feeling of the, as you say, the mom and pop, because I love the, the uh, atmosphere, it gives me a hug. And I just I think it's great.